Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over an explanation, a derivation of how we come up with the energy levels in a hydrogen atom using the Bohr model. And we're going to do that in a similar manner to how we calculated the Bohr radius in the previous video. And you can link to that video, the previous video in the upper right hand corner of this video, if you want to learn all that fascinating information about the Bohr radius. Now, to get the total energy, the energy for the energy levels in a hydrogen atom, we have to get the kinetic energy and add that to the potential energy. We have to add the kinetic and the potential energy together. And we have our hydrogen atom over here. We have a positively charged nucleus and we have a single electron which is traveling around this direction has a velocity that points off in that direction. Now we know there is an electric force. There are two forces actually acting between that positively charged nucleus and that negatively charged electron. And those two forces are the electric force and the centripetal force. Those two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And we can use that convenient fact to come up with a derivation for the equation for the energy levels. Now we can calculate the electric force using Coulomb's law, which is F equals Coulomb's constant times the magnitude of one charge the proton, times the magnitude of the other charge, the electron, divided by the square of the distance between them. To come up with the centripetal force, we can start with Newton's second law, F equals ma. We know when an object is traveling in a circular path, it has centripetal acceleration, which we can calculate as v squared over r. And then we can add that or substitute that, and I shouldn't say add, we can substitute that into our equation, so we get the centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. These two forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. We set them equal to each other. We can cancel those r's and we're left with ke squared divided by r equals mv squared. k is Coulomb's constant, e. Now you know up here we had q and q. That's the magnitude of this charge and the magnitude of this charge. Those two charges are the same Protons and electrons have the same charge. We call that the elementary charge. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So instead of writing Q here and Q here, or Q times Q, or Q squared, the symbol for the elementary charge is E, and we put in here E squared, and then divided by R, equals M, the mass, times the velocity squared. Now, we want to get the kinetic energy first. You'll notice here we're only missing one thing, which is one half, because kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So I can multiply both sides of that equation by one half, and I get one half ke squared divided by r on the left hand side, and that's equal to one half mv squared, and one half mv squared is the kinetic energy. So this term is then equal to the kinetic energy. So this is our kinetic energy, is equal to one half ke squared divided by r. We got the kinetic energy, and on the next slide, we can get the potential energy. The, energy, the equation we use to calculate the potential energy is K, Coulomb's constant again, magnitude of one charge, magnitude of the other charge, divided by just R, it's not R squared. We're going to do the same thing to simplify a little bit. The potential energy is equal to minus Ke squared divided by R. Instead of Q and Q, we put, K, uh, we put E squared here. Now, where does this negative sign come from? It's a little complicated, a little hard to understand, maybe conceptually, but I'll just say that when two charges are infinitely far from each other, then we designate the potential energy between those two charges to be zero. Then, as those two charges come closer and closer, the potential energy decreases, and we put that negative sign in there to indicate or to come up with mathematically that the potential energy will be lower, will be less as those two charges come, come, come closer to each other. So don't forget that negative sign when we're doing our calculations. Now, we have the kinetic energy, we have the potential energy, we're gonna add those two terms to come up with the total energy. You can see here, here we have Ke squared divided by R, Ke squared divided by R, we have one half plus one half here, positive one half, and we have a minus one actually here. So when we add these two terms together, one half plus minus one is actually equal to the total energy will be therefore minus one half Ke squared divided by R. So that is the equation that we can use to calculate the energy at the ground state and each of the excited states in a hydrogen atom. 
And we're going to do that right here. So we're going to calculate the energy for the ground state where the principal quantum number is 1. The ground state is n equals 1. There's no n equals 0. So the energy at the ground state, n equals 1, is equal to minus 1 half times Ke squared divided by R1. This is the radius, and this is the radius for the ground state, which is the Bohr radius, which is 5.3 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. So I can substitute that value in the energy at, at 1, at, ener at the first energy level, <clears throat> and at the ground state, is therefore equal to minus 1 half we plug the values in, k is 9 times 10 to the ninth, e squared is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, that's the charge on the proton and the electron squared, and then we're going to divide that by the radius for the ground state, which is the Bohr radius, 5.3 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, and we come up that the energy in joules from that equation is minus 2.17 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Now, when we talk about energy levels in an atom, they're usually expressed, they're usually given in electron volts, so we're simply going to convert that number of joules into a corresponding number of electron volts, because we know one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. We set up our conversion factor like that, and lo and behold, we get that the energy at the ground state, n equals 1 in a hydrogen atom, is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts. Now, we can calculate the energy for each of the other excited states, or for each of the excited states, by simply substituting into this equation the other radii. This is for the ground state. We calculated in the previous video the radii for the excited states, and we can substitute those in, get joules, get electron volts, and we have our answer. But we can actually kind of simplify this equation to come up with a simpler equation, a little nicer equation. Because we know that when Bohr was coming up with, this, with these ideas, he was trying to figure out why do we not see a continuous spectrum? Why, for example, for hydrogen, do we get this bright line emission spectrum with these distinct emission lines, these distinct bright lines? And he came up with the idea that the momenta and the radii and the energies are quantized. Okay, and they're quantized by whole numbers. So when we calculate this radius, okay, for the ground state and for the excited states, we calculate that radius at any given level and a quantum number as the quantum number squared. So that's a whole number, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, it how many you happen to have, times the initial radius, which is the Bohr radius. Okay, now this is for hydrogen. So we can have the ground state as one, and we did that here that each of the successive radii are bigger, and we calculated those in the previous slide. So we're going to simplify this equation on the next page here. Now here is our general equation. The energy at a given energy level is equal to minus one-half Ke squared divided by Rn, whatever the radius happens to be at that energy level. Now we know the radius is calculated as n squared, times r. So I'm going to substitute that into this equation. And you'll notice here that all of these terms, the 1 half, the k, the e, and the r1, those are all constants. They're not going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this n squared out like that. And now you'll notice we have that term, which we had up here, times 1 over n squared. Now we have our constants here the 1 half, the k, the e squared, and the r. And those are the values that we used when we calculated this value for the ground state of hydrogen is minus 13.6. So these values are not going to change. Those values are always going to be minus 13.6 electron volts. And then we just multiply by 1 over the square of the principal quantum number. Now, at the ground state, this is just 1. So 1 divided by 1 squared is 1, and we come up with minus 13.6. But we can use that, and so we can simplify this, so this is always minus 13.6 electron volts times 1 over the principal quantum number for each of the excited states, whether it's 1, 2, 3, or 4, however many you want to have. And then we can make that equation look a little nicer, simplify like this, that the energy at a given energy level 
is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts divided by the square of the principal quantum number. Okay, and we're going to do that for the first state. Okay, the ground state we did already because this would just be one, one squared. 13.6 divided by 1 is just minus 13.6. For the first excited state, n is 2. Right? Remember, there's no n0. The ground state is n1. Principal quantum number for the first excited state is 2. Minus 13.6 divided by 2 squared is 4. And you get the energy at the first excited state is minus 3.4 electron volts. For the second excited state, n is 3. So that's divided by 9, and you get minus 1.51 electron volts. The third excited is 4, and is 4, divided by 16, and you get 0 0.85 electron volts. And that leads to this diagram, which hopefully you have seen. This is the energy level diagram for hydrogen. The ground state, n is 1, n equals 1. The energy is minus 13.6 electron volts. The first excited state is minus 3.4 electron volts. The second excited state, where n is 3, is minus 1.51 electron volts, and so on, and so on, like that. So there you go. That is how you can derive, that is how you can calculate the energy levels for the ground state in each of the excited states. So I hope you found that video helpful. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a comment for this video. Give me a thumbs up for this video. It helps very much if you support my channel to get my videos out there. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.